Hello and welcome to Business Today Television. I am Siddharth Zarabi from the India Today, Business Today studio here at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. And joining me, a very special guest, uh, Minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar, a member of the Rajya Sabha and currently the MOS for Skill Development, Entrepreneurship, Electronics and Information Technology. Uh, welcome to the uh, show, Rajiv. Uh, thank you very much for making time. Um, and Thank you. I must begin by telling our viewers the context of this uh, context of this conversation. Uh, right here at this studio, uh, the chief technology officer of one of the globe's largest telecom companies said, "India is leading the 5G revolution." And uh, Minister Chandrasekhar uh, has not only played a role in policy making in the recent past, but many years back, also set up India's first mobile. Network and from there on, he has basically seen the entire journey from 2G to 5G. Uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar, if I can ask you to describe that journey in your own words to start this conversation. So, uh, Siddha, thank you for uh, hosting uh, this conversation, and I understand you are in a slightly colder place than uh, I am. I am in Bengaluru, and just uh, just to make you squirm a little bit, the weather here is about 20 degrees centigrade. And it's very pleasant, and I'm uh, hoping that uh, the weather there isn't too tough on you. But uh, look, uh, it is it's, interesting it's that it's only minus fourteen, sir. It's it's yes, it's I only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting that you chose this day to have this chat because uh, about eleven years ago, uh, about around this time, uh, January twenty first, two thousand eleven, to be precise. Uh, I actually had a very important, let's say, landmark milestone uh, in my political career, and that was when I had this press conference uh, in uh, in the Constitution Club, where I invited some media and I took on the the famous or infamous Kapil Sibal statement or attempt to cover up the 2G scam, where he said uh, this is a zero loss, uh, zero loss. Uh, issue and there was no losses, and uh, I had this interesting press conference where I put out a presentation with facts and figures that uh, laid to rest or exposed the zero loss theory that was being used to cover up the 2G scam. And uh, you know, in, in a lot of ways, the 2G scam and the period of the UPA government, where uh, uh, telecom was only seen through the prism of scams and suspect decision making and really dubious decision making uh, at the very uh, at the very minimum to today uh, us talking about 5g talking about india being an innovator in 5g india no longer being just a consumer of technology but really uh, architecting the future of technology and talking about the largest 5g market potentially in the coming years i think india has traveled a, a long distance and uh, so Anyway, I you know while we celebrate today, I think it's uh, always important not to forget uh, that that we traveled a big distance through a very very difficult uh, time of the UPA um, before we got to where we are today. Uh, that that's a good point uh, uh, because uh, you know while there has been a tectonic shift in two from two G to five G and uh, many uh, global CEOs and leaders who've been here with us over the last five days have recognized that fact not just for 5G, but the tech backbone that India has built. Uh, uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar, I don't know if you if you managed to catch what uh, former British Prime Minister Tony Blair has said, uh, that there should be a global um, a system of a digital backbone for vaccine certification, something that India uh, taught the world. But I want to go back into the past, if you permit me. Uh, a lot from the lost a decade, as many people have called it, to India's uh, tech decade. What does this really mean for the Aam Admi in India? So while global elites celebrate India's success, uh, success should really uh, trickle down to the Aam Admi in India, sir. Absolutely. And I think that is the differentiator between the UPA's lost decade and uh, the India decade that Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji has envisioned and is uh, is building and is, is it is a work in progress. Uh, you know, look if you look back at technology, 
uh, uh, and uh, the digital economy for many many years the digital economy was seen through the prism of only the it and ites businesses uh, and uh, and really that was technology it is only after 2014 that we in government policy making about technology covered a spectrum of three broad goals and the goals included one that technology must be deployed in a way where people's lives are transformed and the age old uh, perception about india that governance does not work technology can be used to change that perception and prime minister narendra modi ji has turned on its head the age old perception that you know 100 paise leaves delhi only a 15 paise is reach the beneficiary to where now 100 paise leaves delhi and 100 paise reaches the beneficiary's account responsibly without corruption without leakage technology was uh, very uh, largely responsible for that type of transformation and build of trust in in governance so there is absolutely no doubt and if you even if you look at the entire covid pandemic period that the technology and the investments that the prime minister made in, from the years 2014 to 2019 uh, were very very important part of how india was resilient response to the covid pandemic panned out uh, starting from uh, detection of the disease and tracking of the disease to delivering vaccines that now have crossed 210 crores and uh, to to get the digital the economy going back again allowing government to function due because of the proliferation of the internet and connectivity so technology certainly has played uh, unlike uh, any time in the past uh, a significant role in transforming governance people's lives in india and recognizing that today the india stack is now increasingly being lauded by countries around the world they are looking that at that as an example india's uh, rise as a, pre a preeminent country in terms of deploying technology and governance is something that countries uh, all around the world uh, including those who have been deprived of technology or have considered technology a very expensive investment in governance are aiming to replicate and the prime minister during this g20 presidency year of india has uh, very graciously and very generously uh, in keeping with his vision offered the india stack to any country that uh, seeks to digitalize just as india has and transform their citizens lives as india has so i think we have uh, we have really deployed technology uh, in a way that no country has and it has really affected people's lives of course on the other side and the other element of how we have used technology we have created entrepreneurship we have created innovation ecosystems around fintech and many, many other areas and transformed uh, from being a nation that really depended on outside technology to now being a leader of technology and being if not the leader but amongst the leading pack in designing architecting and producing devices products platforms and solutions digital uh, for uh, the world's consumers and enterprises and governments so i think we have uh, you know not to say not to overstate it but the last 8 years have been tremendously defining or redefining years for india's technology ecosystem and and for the perception of india in the global community uh, in general uh, you spoke about the global community and i can tell you uh, in the uh, literally dozens of uh, interactions interviews that we have been doing here uh, this fact is underscored by every single global executive who came to our studios here rajiv you were spot on uh um uh, in in 2011 and like you said uh, share coincidence on the, on almost practically this very uh, day i want you to look ahead uh, because you have spoken about some of these topics that i want to tell our viewers about and if you could uh, dwell a little bit more on uh net neutrality uh, the right to privacy as a fundamental right uh, uh, you also uh, have have uh, uh, looked at the Uh, open safe trusted internet uh, paradigm uh, and and uh, that fight that you led what does all of this mean f uh, for you personally uh, as a technology leader and now as a policy maker sitting at the highest level of the government so look i think one thing is clear that uh, with the political leadership and the vision and the ambition that 
uh, the Prime Minister of India has for India and for Indians, that uh, it is very safe to presume and assume that what we are seeing today is only the tip of the iceberg. Uh, and what uh, he has very beautifully coined a phrase called the India decade, a decade full of opportunities. And he has further characterized the India decade as a decade that will be built by and built on the energy, the enthusiasm, and the innovation of young Indians from all over the country. So I think in a lot of ways, uh, even for me individually, and I have an old hat at technology, I've spent many years in this, I've seen the ups, downs, uh, the good and the bad of technology from cl close quarters. I have never been more excited about India. I have never been more excited about young Indians from all over the country that are absolutely doing cutting edge work, uh, wanting to succeed, not wanting to succeed only in their small uh, local community, but wanting to get global recognition, uh, global scale, global you know successes. So I think we are really at the cusp of uh, uh, something very great for ourselves as a nation. And, and, uh, and a lot of this greatness and a lot of this, let's say, uh, growth of our, of our nation and the confidence is coming from young Indians from all over the country. So uh, I, I am personally extremely excited about where India is today. Uh, I am extremely excited as an Indian about the leadership and the clarity of vision that the Prime Minister has demonstrated and navigated the country over the last eight years. And that has set the tone in some ways for the next decade. And so the promise of India becoming a fully developed nation in the next two decades isn't really any more a pipe dream or uh, rhetoric. It is really built on uh, our confidence that has emerged even more higher, uh, especially in the technology domain post-COVID. Uh, uh, that confidence, I think, is, is the catalyst uh, in terms of how we will do more uh, more work and will show more leadership in technology in the coming years and the, certainly in the India decade. Uh, Rajiv, you are sitting in um, uh, in warm and uh, sunny uh, the Silicon Valley capital mm -hmm. of India. I am here in minus 14 Davos, uh, get, uh, a gathering of uh, the global capitalist uh, elite. One of the other issues that came up and if you could uh, use this occasion to talk about that uh, uh, and move move beyond the telecom world uh, and the app world into the issue of data and its privacy. Uh, where do we stand on that and how soon do we see that effort that you've also been putting your shoulder to uh, to get a sort of robust framework for uh, data privacy protection and safeguarding of individual rights? No, again, I think we are at a very good sp uh, good uh, place vis-a-vis uh, -vis that bill. Uh, as you know, the uh, Prime Minister, when he uh, noticed that the, the previous bill had become uh, unwieldy and had become very complex and uh, compliance intensive, uh, very bravely took a uh, decision of repealing that bill. And he made it very clear that uh, uh, the legislative framework that we built will be for the future and will be something that will continue to catalyze the innovation ecosystem growth and the growth of startups and innovation amongst young Indians all over. And so we put pen to the paper and uh, and the bill, as you are aware, has been in consultation for some time now. And uh, we have uh, taken on board most of the inputs. Uh, it is clear that the, we are charting a certainly a new course very different from the gdpr or the european constructs on data production uh, and we are in a sense doing something that uh, has never been attempted before and uh, and are being successful at it which is uh, protecting the citizens rights continuing to catalyze the innovation economy and uh, clearly define what the government's emergency rights for legitimate purpose for access to data is so i think we have uh, moved away from considering these issues as binaries or tertiaries and having to make a choice of only going down one direction and built a framework that is simple, that is absolutely clear and will not require highly paid lawyers to interpret and go through fine print. It is uh, absolutely simple. We consider all legislations in the cyberspace that we will uh, undertake. And there is a two-pronged approach to this. One is the DPDP bill and down the road, there will be a Digital India Act. 
both these legislations will be legislations that will see significant stakeholder participation in consultations and will be less of a bill by the government and a more by a bill by all concerned stakeholders that the government will champion and pilot so there is a difference in approach there is a difference in content there is a difference in terms of how we are designing these bills as being less prescriptive and more principle led more architecture led and much more contemporary and evolvable so that these bills never uh, find themselves in a situation where the sudden changes in technology or disruptions in technology make the bill uh, sort of irrelevant or less relevant so we want the bill to have a continuing life and the ability to be continuingly relevant uh, and so we've designed the bill bill this bill as well as the forthcoming dia in that manner uh, i'm i'm wishing you very well for those efforts uh, as we were speaking uh, mr chandrashekar i i've also been made aware by colleagues about uh, your very strong reaction to a viral video which uh, uh, that event took not uh, place not very far from where i am uh, presently where uh, uh, pfizer ceo was was asked some questions by my media representatives uh, what's your view on this because there was in the past an issue around uh, what pfizer wanted to do to supply its medicines uh, its vaccine to india yeah i i i think my tweet was really uh, meant uh, to remind uh, my fellow citizens about uh, the the difficult times of 2020 and how some people were uh, their conduct needs to be rem remem remembered and in a sense uh, we should remind ourselves of that there was the these uh, these so called vaccine companies who attempted to bully the government of india and said look we will not sell unless the government of india indemnifies us and uh, I, you know i think they miscalculated uh, by trying to uh, you know coerce or threaten uh, prime minister narendra modi ji's government and he has not been coerced or threatened by worse actors than <laughs> the vaccine companies and so that was doomed to fail and it failed but what is also interesting and i and i think i took this opportunity to remind uh, my fellow citizens that it is at that same time when when this company was trying to bully the government of india that there were certain uh, you know sort of uh, people in the opposition who consider themselves leaders who were waxing eloquent about uh, at that time exactly that time about how india was putting people at risk by not buying vaccines from these foreign companies so i think you know people tend to have uh, short memories in in politics uh, covid was a clearly a troubling disturbing time that put everybody in so much of concern and worry but as we come out of it and as we move forward it is important to remind ourselves about what people said during covid what people proposed during covid who said what who did what who did all the heavy lifting and hard work in protecting our people and who sat around and tweeted irresponsibly and uh, which companies tried to uh, exploit uh, the disease uh, and exploit the countries that they thought were vulnerable so i think these that that tweet was meant to just remind everybody that these things did happen and uh, we should not forget that uh, mr chandrashekar um, as the congress uh, has been accused of hypocrisy by you uh, jairam ramesh has responded to this and has held a press conference where he basically says and this this is his tweet mind the language viewers this is total bullshit mr minister let not your ambition to climb the greasy pole make you more of a liar than you are uh, what's your response Look, sir jairam jairam is uh, is uh, is obviously a poet and a, and and fancies himself to be a clever wordsmith there are there is a competition in the congress for people who think they are uh mighty smart and uh, clever with words but uh, jairam and chidambaram and rahul gandhi's role during the covid pandemic is known and uh, if he has amnesia i am more than happy to constantly remind him uh, place it in front of him so that he reads his own tweets his own uh, statements about uh, vaccines and uh, the and uh, the challenges and the questions and the aspersions that they cast on prime minister narendra modi ji's efforts at that time 
uh, and uh, and certainly i'm willing to even enter into a discussion with them about all of the economic uh, proposals that uh, the uh, so called intellectual giants of the congress proposed during 2020 including saying we should be more like the us and we should do this and we should do that and uh, and you know here we are the fastest growing economy in the world with the lowest inflation in a in a global economy that is beset with high inflations and uh, in a much better place both economically and from a healthcare point of view uh, compared to the us uk and uh, china all of the countries that otherwise jairam and his uh, ilk find uh, uh, to be icons so uh, I, i would leave it at that i i don't intend to join uh, uh, words with uh, jairam ramesh he is of course the pr uh, representative for rahul gandhi and he that's his job to do have press conferences and say things that uh, gain him the currency and favor with his dynasty party our party does not work that way our government works on work and merit and uh, so i leave it at that my final question uh, because we started this conversation on uh, india's uh, tech revolution from 2g to uh, 5g and you uh, earlier on during this conversation spoke about how prime minister modi has offered um, the india stack tech capabilities to any nation uh, uh, and and that sort of coincides with our presidency of the g20 i'm coming back to the point that the former british prime minister made about uh, a sort of global uh, uh, digital backbone program for future vaccination uh, rollouts do you think this is a big validation of what we manage uh, to do then and many of us didn't also realize how big it would eventually become mr chandrashekar no sir you are absolutely right i think and i i want to say this Uh, with the greatest responsibility the, the there is a lot of awe and respect for how india used technology during the covid pandemic and how many of the decisions and many of the investments that the prime minister and his government made leading up to 2020 have came in very very handy in our battle against the covid pandemic in our efforts to protect uh, our citizens from the pandemic in the effort, in our efforts to protect citizens from their livelihood disruptions and uh, and in, in, including running the world's largest food grain distribution program that continues to today the uh, prime minister garib kalyan anna yojana which also worked on a technology backbone so i think the fact that technology has worked for the benefit of people in a crisis like the pandemic is the best validation for the technology capabilities that has been built over the last 6 7 years pre the covid and many countries and i can without revealing names to you tell you that at least seven countries have even serious interest in adopting the india stack in customizing the india stack and uh, later this month in delhi there is a large conference where there is a developers conference that is an india stack developers conference where companies system integrators from all around the world and in india will come in and understand the india stack and then of course go to their markets and go to other markets and and offer to implement it and as the prime minister has offered free of cost so uh, i think it's absolutely there is no doubt and i agree with you that none of us saw this happening none of us felt that such a big thing was being built but it is clear now in hindsight what has what was done what was built Uh, has tremendously contributed to our resilience and our response to the covid pandemic which other countries as you can still see today in china in the us in in europe uh, uh, did not uh, were not able to do absolutely mr chandrashekar and uh, i'm glad you uh, shared this bit of news with us because right here at this studio uh, we were also told by Uh, anil agarwal uh, just a uh, couple of days back that in 30 to 40 days there will be a ground breaking ceremony for that massive semiconductor plant and imagine india stack uh, for at least seven countries and more mr chandrashekar thank you very much uh, where we recapped that last decade plus and hopefully i'll get to do more such conversation thank you very much uh, for your thank time you. with us today with that viewers th it's a wrap on this conversation uh, and from our studio here at davos i'll see you again till then goodbye